Grim gritty ghosts come out to socialize. So, um, I don't think anybody cares about the release of this thing, but I saw it. So, you know what? Why not? Uh, The Muppets Haunted Mansion, out now on Disney+. Plus. I watched it with my partner Liz, because we both like Muppets. And it's, um, really insubstantial. <laughs> I mean, the first thing to keep in mind is, like, this is, this is not uh, a movie. This is not even an hour. It barely qualifies as a special. And it is an incredibly cynical product. It is basically a tour through the Haunted Mansion attraction with the Muppets. Now, I say that, and that makes it sound like it's like a behind-the-scenes thing where the Muppets are being shown. No, no, no. Like, they do try and build a narrative out of it, but it has Gonzo and Pepe the King Prawn who being uh, led through the Haunted Mansion, and everything, nearly everything they encounter is a part of the Haunted Mansion attraction at Disneyland, at Disney World. And while recognizing the incredibly shallow cynicism of that product, speaking as someone who not only likes the Muppets, but also really likes the Haunted Mansion, I got some enjoyment out of this. I'm not sure there's going to be too much enjoyment to be had from people who only like one of those things and who don't have the proper crossover in the Venn diagram. But for me, like, especially as someone who does enjoy the Haunted Mansion, like, grew up with the, like, the vinyl record and the, and the illustrated thing that came with it, I enjoyed catching, like, ooh, I know that snippet of music or, like, I know that exact bit that they're referencing and I've gone on the ride multiple times. So I enjoyed catching those things in an Easter egg-y kind of way and seeing which uh, of the various Muppets they slid into the different roles of the different ghosts in the Haunted Mansion. Um, and, of course, since it's Muppets, there's a lot of cameos, so watch out for those as well. But once I realized that there was going to be no depth to this whatsoever, I I had some surface-level enjoyment. That's kind of really all I can say. Um, some of the things, I think, were slightly ill-advised. Like, um... What they did with Fozzie, in theory, where they had him be the, the hat box ghost. Um, it was a ghost with kind of an interesting backstory because he was there when the um, attraction first opened. And he's in the, like, the illustrated thing in the album he's referenced. Um, but he was actually taken out of the attraction for a long, long time, but then put back in more relatively recently. And he's, he's, he's a good ghost. He's a creepy looking ghost. But one of the most distinct things about him is the grin with these teeth. And so they slapped teeth onto Fozzie. It looks wrong. Like not even in a creepy way, just in a why. Why would you do that? I mean, other than that, like I, it was around um, Muppet Christmas Carol that they kind of decided to put a spotlight on Gonzo as like the, the sort of inroad for when they they take on existing stories. Um, they did it with this. They did it with Love of Treasure Island. They And, you know, they did it, as I mentioned, with um, Love of Christmas Carol. And I think he actually worked quite well for that because he's so unfazed by whatever the insanity is. That's kind of his whole shtick. Um, and I also, I remember, I think it was um, Muppets from Space, which is underrated for the record, where they first paired up Gonzo with uh, with Pepe. Now, normally I'm used to seeing Gonzo, Pepe, and Rizzo as kind of a, kind of a triple threat. I was missing Rizzo a little bit. But that having been said, Pepe does have a good dynamic with Gonzo, and I do find Pepe amusing. Um, so he worked well for me in this. The humans are doing the best that humans can do in a Muppet movie, being trying to be as exaggerated as these various things are, but, you know, generally get a, getting overshadowed by a sock on somebody's hand, ultimately, at the end of the day. And pretty much everybody, except for, um, like, two, maybe three of them, were probably on set for half a day. <laughs> and, and that was it. But again, that's very standard for Muppet stuff. I think if you are someone who does not already have like a heavy um, stable of 
the sort of family friendly Halloweeny stuff. So like for me, like some people have their go tos like that be things like the Nightmare Before Christmas or Hocus Pocus. Um, for me, my standards for that are uh, more in the neighborhood of like um, the uh, the Disney version of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow or the real Ghostbusters cartoon episode When Halloween Was Forever or uh, the Garfield Halloween special. Uh, th- those are kind of my jam uh, a little bit more. But I think a l- lot of us, at least if you're my age, you've accumulated sort of your your go-to Halloween specials. And if you've got some gaps in it, you feel like you you could have a little bit more of that real family-friendly, but it has a little bit of the spooky aesthetic to it, whatever, and give this a watch. But it, like, it is shallow. If you are one of those people who hasn't been thrilled with what's gone on with the Muppets in the last decade or so under Disney, this is hardly going to turn it around for you. This is actually kind of brings back memories of when Disney first took control of the Muppets and they did a whole lot of made for TV stuff with them. And this very much has that vibe. And I'm hoping to see at some point in the future, an injection of more energy like we got with the, uh, the you know, the Muppets or even Muppets Most Wanted. Or I seriously, I will defend that, that ABC Muppets show that only got one season. I'll defend the hell out of it. But it, it feels like after um, Muppets Most Wanted didn't didn't uh, hit quite as hard as they wanted. And after that show only got one season, feels like Disney has decided to largely back burner the Muppets. And this feels reflective of that. It's fine. Again, it's shallow. There's very little to it. And I'm not sure how much entertainment anyone who doesn't already know, like the, the ins and outs of the Haunted Mansion Ryan is actually going to get from it. But the Muppets kind of deserve better. I would say the Haunted Mansion deserves better. I'm not sure that that's true. The Haunted Mansion works as an attraction. I don't know why they keep trying to make movies out of it in the first place. But there you go. No one's going to watch this video. What am I doing? Nobody cares about this thing. Oh, well. This is the break room of geeks. I just throw up whatever the heck I feel like. But if you have seen this thing, what did you think about it? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, The usual stuff. All those things. I have a Patreon if you feel like supporting me there. Um, But no pressure on that. Take a relaxed attitude around here. So just come on back next time you need a break. And look at you sticking around through the credits. I appreciate that. Well, you know what? You're about to be treated to a whole ton of names going by on the screen. But there's a few of them that I want to give special attention to. My special thanks to Bookworm, Jared Boyce, MJ, Tracy Scrabbit, Vincent Paul Bartolucci, Kaylin Schwartz, Edelin, Hannah Acker, Robin Moore, Ross Schultz, and Shay Ligourle. If you want to hear me mispronounce your name, check out the reward tiers on the Patreon. But for right now, thanks so much.